Hi guys, thanks a lot for joining me for this. Uh, I'm gonna quickly talk you through a consolidation of group companies. We're gonna do two group companies, a parent and a subsidiary. It's gonna be really simple. Uh, I'm gonna take you through how to make your reporting packs, your year-to-date reporting packs off your TBs, how to add them up, turn it into an aggregation, how to put a group mapping on top of it, and then how to consolidate. So how to remove those uh, group uh, nominal accounts and also how to uh, do your goodwill adjustment. Um, we're going to run through that working file pretty quickly and as ever the working file will be provided in the comments so just uh, click in the comments or in the description of the video and you'll be able to download it and you'll be able to see how it works uh, and in this video we're also going to run out through some, some things to look out for right just as an aside everybody always kind of gets uh, het up about consolidation who's this video for well it's for your final con financial controllers running a business up to about 100 million revenue uh, you probably got a couple of accounting systems because you're growing by acquisition. Uh, I'm not a static accountant at all. I would have said I'm a street accountant. I know how to get results out quickly, effectively, how to make them look good. Uh, and that's what people care about, if I'm honest. They care about the next 30 days. They do not care about your stats because your stats are going to look like your MI, aren't they? Because you're going to get your MI right. So that's who this is for. It's for your group controllers who haven't really consolidated before. It's a working file to work your way through. Consolidation is a piece of piss once you know how to do it. Uh, and this file and this video will tell you how to do it. All right, guys, thanks very much. And let's dive into the Excel file I prepared. Hi, guys, thanks a lot for joining us uh, in the Excel file. Uh, and as you can see, I'll zoom in quickly on the bottom. Well, that didn't really help. But you can see here it's got one, two, three, four, five, six tabs. The green are reporting packs, we'll come into what that means. There's a goodwill calculation and there's your actual consolidation in the first tab here. But to start off with all consolidations, all consolidations start in the same place. They start with the trial balances. As you can see here, I've got the two uh, trial balances here. We're doing a two company consolidation, UKTB or UKCO and ROI, Republic of Ireland TB. And you can see here, this is a trial balance. It should be immediately looking familiar to you. Uh, I'll highlight quickly in green these columns and these are the columns which uh, when you uh, export a trial balance from your account system you'll always get the account number, nominal name and uh, the year to date or you can make the year to date by adding and subtracting your uh, debit, debit and credit column. Uh, make sure you always run a year to date trial balance that's really important. Uh, I'll explain why that's really important later. Um, so you can see here what I've done is these are kind of fixed columns these these two and then I do a sum if and drop in the actual uh, the actual year to date data from a data download and I have I keep this all in a, a file a consolidation file a couple of other things to note here when you're looking at it um, you can see here in row column a I've got a, a three I've got I've added on this balance sheet p l reserves um, just check the blanks see what the hell that was must not have filled something. Office costs, all right, that's obviously P and L. Uh, and what that does is it breaks up your trial balance into the three categories that it always is. It's gonna be uh, either a um, balance sheet item, it's either gonna be a reserve item, or it's gonna be a PL. And at the top of every file, I do a quick check, which is a sum off if of column A, adding up the PL year to date, balance sheet year to date, reserves year to date. And then obviously it should all balance as it does. So that's one check at the top. And one check at the bottom, ignore that first column, it's uh, not relevant, but you can see here, July, you've got another balance check in. On all my files, I always try to do my checks in yellow, uh, and you can see it's, it balances. So we know that we pulled through all the nominal co codes from our download into the UK tab. And we know here, we've done exactly the same in Ireland. And note the current foreign currency, that's also another piece to note. Excuse me, sorry. So you can see here then, we've... Um, got our two TBs, UK and ROI, and we've dropped them into our reporting packs. And this is where kind of the work you have to do starts. We then next need to make a reporting pack. Right, so I showed you where the TBs are and I showed you quickly, uh, you know, this column, right? This column, this reporting pack column, this is a column created by you and it's how you convert your TBs into reporting tax, which is uh, your P&L and your balance sheet. So if we quickly flick to the reporting pack here, you can see here, this should begin to look a bit familiar, right? We've got revenue, intergroup sales, cost of sales, margin, different categories of overhead, going down to EBITDA, depreciation, exceptionals, dividend, balance sheet, right? And what you can see here then, if we go to ROI, TB, 
in this reporting pack column, so in column E, what I've done is I've gone across all, each of these nominal codes and I've mapped them to fixed assets, investments, etc. If it's a bank account and you're the only person who's going to be able to do this because you know your mapping, you'll just be able to map it very quickly. It doesn't take any time at all. Um, the way I'd recommend it, though, is make sure every every nominal code or GL will start with a category, uh, you know, it'll go down to 4,000 or something. So uh, in this one, yeah, p &L starts at 4,000. Put that mapping on first, then put your reserves mapping on, and then put your balance sheet mapping in column A. And then it's really easy to map your reporting pack, right? Because what you do is you just go to the PL because you've already filtered that, and then you can quickly run through each of these items, and you'll know this from the top of your head, you'll know what it is. And you can see here, I've got this junk going to cost of sales, I've got intergroup sales, uh, I've got different breakdowns of um, of overhead, yeah, and because I control this entity, I know what it is, right? Uh, and what you'll do is you need to make a reporting pack off the back of that. Right. And you can see here, these are all your categories. And the way I do this and the easiest way to do this, right, and to build this quickly is first off, what you do is you map your TB into these categories. And once you've got them, you do control C. Yeah. Then you copy it into a new tab like this. And what you want to do then is you go to data, remove duplicates. Right. And then, you know, that you've copied all of the items down correctly and you can quickly move this up, move this down, other revenue, you know where that should sit on the balance sheet, you know where intergroup sales, that's a sales, let's put that there. All of these are overheads, you can see now, we can do this very quickly. Summif, UK reporting pack, uh, off column E, take the year to date for December, there we go, right there. And at this point, this is when, uh, you know, you have debits and credits, so if we present it like that, that's obviously a credit because it's revenue. Yeah, we've uh, received revenue here, so it's a credit. I actually like to turn it around at this stage and present in, uh, you know, most people present like that. Finance cost, we can just pull this all the way down, yeah, like this. And here's a quick chance to check your details because if you add this all up, this should be equal your p &L. Let's have a look, 52,000. Let's go back to our TV, ROI, wasn't it? And you can remember here, I filtered I already added this uh, from column A, this check, to check the p and 52,000, yeah? So we know that we're pulling through all the data correctly. And you can see how it's very easy then from this, once you have this, to turn this into your uh, into a reporting, a reporting pack, which looks like a standard p and yeah? In total sales, let's move that down. Oh, let's just tidy this up a little bit. Cost of sales, obviously, there, like that. Yeah, total sales, and then move that down. That'll be margin or your GP. I would just call it margin. Yeah, that divided by that now is your GP percentage. GP percentage, margin. Let's tidy this up a little bit. You don't want any of those highlighting colours anymore, do you? Hey, okay. I always take view, take off the grid lines because grid lines look like junk. Yeah. Presentation's half the battle in accounts, yeah? People like to see things tidy. Up like that. Highlight it, highlight it, highlight there. there. Let's do that, we'll just do a single underline, sorry, like that. Margin, GP, percentage is a percentage. Right, now you've got to do a little bit of work here to get to EBITDA. Obviously, we want EBITDA. We don't want anything, uh, we don't want anything below that. So taxation. Dividend, that's the thing to note if the company's paid a dividend here. Obviously, it looks like it's uh, paid a dividend. Remember, that would normally be a credit, but that's not a credit, that's a takeaway because we've reversed the signage. Yeah, up here. These are all your overheads. Oh, there's a bit of depreciation, or there would have been depreciation there, in there, so we'll take that out. So you can see here, right, we're now quickly, very quickly, building an actual p &L, right? Total overhead. So again, that there. Right, oh, sorry, subtotals always. There, total overhead, right? And then once we've got that, we've got the magic item EBITDA, which is what everybody cares about. Yeah. Total overhead off margin. 
EBITDA, like that, and then this junk off the bottom. Let's call that our PAT, profit after tax. All right, there we go. Double check that again. Remember, made that check at the top. Link it back through, 52,000 on your PL. Very good. Zero. So check again, always in yellow. That's how I like to do mine. Why? Because I learned from a really old accountant when I first started trading. He had all of his checks in yellow, and obviously we're accountants, so we're not original at all. So we just copy something good from someone else. This is copied from someone else, obviously. I didn't come up with this genius spreadsheet or this way of setting it out. And you see here, there we go, right? That is our reporting pack. That's the PL at least. So we do again. You set up your reporting pack again. Remember, we filtered it. That's why we put on this magic column on A. We now go to balance sheet and reserves. Once again, we copy it down, all of that, put it into here, drop that. We again sort by duplicates, data, remove duplicates to only get unique values. All right, once again, we just copy this formula down. Here we are. Might need to switch some of it. Ooh, office costs, it's a bit weird. Let's just have a look. Office costs, I've just noticed something. Something's obviously wrong in our mapping because office cost doesn't sound like a balance sheet item, does it? Let's find out what we've done. It isn't P and L. There we go. So we'll correct that, not a problem. Go back here, delete that junk, because it is junk. Right. And let's again start cutting the PL. So share capital reserves. There we go. Everybody knows those go on the bottom half of your balance sheet. Uh, easy, aren't they? What are we missing though? We're missing the current year, aren't we? Pull that down, put that there. Uh, fixed assets, trade getter. So all of your assets up at the top. That seems like a decent split there. Got negative accruals or an asset in accruals. So obviously something's wrong in the underlying data, but whatever. Who cares? It doesn't matter right now. Here, yeah. right. Now I know that this is, uh, I know that the answer to this is because I've reserved, reversed. Remember I reversed the signage up above, but we know that there we shouldn't have uh, negative other debtors, negative bank. Yeah, uh, and that explains why accounts payable is also the wrong way around, wrong signage. Turn that around, there we go. There, there, you see already, right? We very, very quickly in under five minutes built a p and and balance sheet. So let's just quickly do our check. So here, what's this? This is uh, current asset or assets. It's actually current assets because there aren't any fixed assets in this. Oh. Uh, and this is our current liabilities. Liabilities, yeah. Change that and that. Again, remove all this goddamn colour. We don't want any of that junk. No fill, yeah. Let's make that formatting better. Again, as I say, formatting is really important because it's the uh, people love, management absolutely love stuff which looks good. Yeah, if your financial information, the Excel doesn't look good, then you may as well go home. No one's going to trust that you're doing anything right. There, there, 184, 184, great. Again, another balance sheet. Remember, I've dropped in that part that that's from the current year, current year profit. Yeah, we've got a balance check. Check. Always put our checks on. You want to make them visible. People like to see visible checks to make sure that you're not just making it up. Calibri 8, same font. There we go. All right, so let's see what we've done now. We have now made a reporting pack from the TV, yeah, for December. And you see there it is. It all reconciles. How do we know it reconciles? Well, we've got a check back to the PL and we've got a check back to the balance sheet and it balances, yeah. Uh, and so what we've done, if you do control left square bracket, takes you to the TB. Off column E, we made up this mapping of our nominal ledger to give us this year-to-date P&L. And that is 
the reporting pack for the Republic of Ireland going straight back to the PL. We've got a categorization here. If you know your business well, you'll know if something's wrong immediately. You'll be able to look at it and think, Jesus, did I really spend no money on rent? Did I really spend 4.4K on uh, professional, professional fees or service charge? But you'll be able to drill in and take you to the TB codes to find out what that is. So let's have a look at this. Let's pull up a PL item. Take off that filter, pull off a PL item. Did I really spend four and a half K on professional fees? Well, let's find out. Professional fees. Well, I've got two lines in there. I've got a marketing fee, which is zero, and I've got professional fees in there. So maybe I did, and you can drill into that, go back to the account system, have a look, uh, and find out what's going on. You can obviously see the advantage here. If you were to use a GL directly and create a pivot, to create your TB, then you'd actually be able to double click through that line item to find the actual actual year to date transactional detail to pull up exactly what that 4.4K is. That's uh, probably for a different section. But you can see here then, I made this reporting pack very, very quickly, which links directly to the TBs and we've got a unique mapping there. Right, well, in true Blue Peter style, while I made that on screen, here's what I did earlier. And you can see here, I've already dropped in December and that links back to this December. Yeah, and setting up and making this file is, you know, it's very easy. October, Mar uh, October, September, August, July, all year to date files, right? You can see here, that's a cumulative. So July did that, we've almost doubled in August, blah, 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 all the way across. You see here, links directly back to the TV. This is you making your reporting pack, okay? And so we've got here now, we've got year to date information, information right? year-to-date info right here and then what we do here this is you make a separate reporting pack here by taking the difference between your year-to-date on the PL, you get the actual monthly movement and this is one of the things I was saying why it's important to take the year-to-date because what happens is if you take the year-to-date if you pull the information for November say uh, and you start making your reporting pack uh, and then someone in your team says they closed your ledger, but actually they haven't, or maybe one of the companies that you're uh, beneath you as the parent has said it's closed, that it hasn't, and they post something, it isn't captured in your November numbers after you closed, right? After you closed the, gro the group numbers. But what happens is that if you always take the year to date and you always take the difference from two year to date files, you always capture any movements afterwards because you're taking a new year to date and you're comparing it against the old year to date to give you your monthly movement. And that means that if you always take the difference between your year to date files to get your monthly movement, then you will always, always capture all adjustments which may have happened after someone told you they closed. So that's really important. And you see here, we've gone down all the way across, taking the difference for each of these. Obviously the balance sheet's always the same comes at the end of the file. You can see here, you've now got a reporting pack month by month, year to date, and also the actual movement in the month. And off the back of this, right, I always put a cash flow. I haven't got it here, but it's you know now extremely easy to put a cash flow on the back of this. Uh, you know, an indirect cash flow, just show, taking off all the balance sheet items, your profit, etc. So we've done that for the Republic of Ireland, which is a subsidiary company. And you can see here quickly while we just go through it, and you can see there's a, a unhelpfully uh, not pull that line through but you can see here there's a couple of uh and this is all in the working file there's a couple of kind of intercompany codes intergroup sales that, that, that doesn't exist in a standalone company dividend doesn't exist in a standalone company and also we've got nothing in investments which is good you wouldn't expect that for a subsidiary but uh do we have any intercompany we should have some oh there we are intercompany debt yeah so you've got some line items which you should already be thinking about well i'm going to have to eliminate them when I consolidate. So we do the same and we do the same again now with the UK. So zooming in, you can see here I've done exactly the same, pulling off this other UK TV and I've created another reporting pack. But it's UK sales, cost of sales, intergroup purchases. Let's quickly run through this one again. Intergroup purchases, we'd want to eliminate that. We were well, there's a dividend received, wasn't there? A dividend paid. So we'd be expecting to see a dividend didn't really receive there it is yeah and this remember i made up this mapping on the left hand side you'll be making up your own mapping intergroup uh investments good right there's some investments there that's good to see because this is the parent so they need to be eliminated what else needs to be eliminated intercompany loan there we go uh and then there'll be an adjustment to share capital but you've got now two reporting packs right and if you were uh reporting 
on the UK. Someone said, give me the UK in information numbers where well, you export that, send it across. Give me Ireland standalone accounts, send me that. Well, that's fine. That's great. You can give them to your kind of uh, underlying management. But when you get to the top of the tree, everybody only cares really well. They care about seeing the group view first and then they want the drill down. So then you need to get into the heart of the consolidation. And we'll go to that now with the console tab. So if we go to the console tab, you can see here what we've got is we've got a mapping. We'll come on to that mapping in a bit. But you can see here it's set up with the UK company, ROI and total. Then we've got our consolidation adjustments. Then we've got our group after that consolidation. And when we look at this, we've got a sum if on the year to date. So sum if group mapping, we'll come on to what that means later. Off the year to date file in your reporting pack across the UK all the way down, taking the PL and balance sheet, which you've already created and pulling it into this consolidation tab. And you can see here, we're doing the same with Ireland, exactly the same, pulling it through on a group mapping, which we'll come on to in a second. Yep, uh, all the way through, but you can see here, there's a slight difference here. We're dividing by the FX rate, and that's because the functional currency of the group is in pound sterling. So we want to present in pound sterling. And we translate when you consolidate, you always translate the PL at one rate and the balance sheet at the closing rate. You translate the PL at the average rate of the period and the balance sheet at the closing rate. And so you do that going down all the way across. And I'm just going to highlight that, the OCI, ROI OCI, because what you'll notice is if you translate a PL at two different a PL and balance sheet at two different rates, you always get a FX difference. And here we have ours, we plug it through the OCI, statement of OCI just plugging through there, right? And so that brings us to this. We've got a reporting pack. We're basically pulling through our reporting packs with both, company, uh, both companies. And you can see here that there's, there was something I said, I use group mapping, right? And this is often what I do. So in our reporting packs for the UK and ROI, I've added on next to the p and I've added on an additional set of mapping. And you can see that a lot of these terms between the company mapping in column B and the group mapping are the same. UK sales, UK revenue, slight difference in terminology. They could be the same. Cost of sales, intergroup purchases. But you can see here, what I've done here is where I've mapped to separate codes for the overheads, I've chucked it all to UK admin. And the reason you do this, right, or often you do this, is that higher up you get in a group structure in management, less they know, want to know about the detail, what they want to know about is what the totals are. So we're consolidating and grouping information together. And that means that when we do a sum if of the group mapping, yeah, if we go here, we're pulling all together, all of those UK admin expenses, which were broken out into separate line items. We're pulling them all together into a single line item to get to EBITDA. And that's to make it tidier and tidier as you get higher up the tree. And we've done exactly the same in the Republic of Ireland. We've added our additional mapping. You can see here the main difference there is I've included uh, a group mapping there where I've consolidated all of these admin expenses into one line item. So it's just much tidier on the front sheet. And we've done that across, all the way across. And what we do then is we have a total column pre-consolidation. And what that does is it goes across and it adds up every single line item all the way across here to give you a total like that. And a lot of people think who don't know anything about consolidation, they get to this stage and they don't know what they do. And this isn't a consolidation, it's an aggregation. You've added up all the TBs and balances, but it doesn't reflect the true group uh, structure or the group results because you've got some intergroup eliminations to uh, do and you've got some intergroup adjustments that you have to do. But that's if you get to this stage, this is a good stage, right? You're kind of getting there. And checks again at the bottom. Well, I always make sure that this ties back to the PL in each of them. I normally have a check there going UK, going back to the uh, go across, going back to that. Uh, the reason it doesn't tie is the dividend. You can see 88 there, but it's fine. I know that all ties up. And I also have a check on the balance sheet, balance sheet check, and you can see the dividends being pulled through on the bottom, right? So there's a couple of changes there. Uh, and I've highlighted on our working file, all the items in yellow, which are kind of consolidation things. So the first thing that you go to, you've added this all up, but you need to uh, do your very first uh, consolidation adjustment. And the first consolidation adjustment that I always do is the goodwill on acquisition, right? And so what is goodwill, right? So goodwill is an accounting adjustment, which is created when you buy a business for more than its net assets. And to illustrate this, if we go to the goodwill tab, I quickly made this. What I'm saying is that when the UK 
bought the ROI, when it bought the Republic of Ireland entity, it bought it for a million quid. The net assets, or so its balance sheet of the Republic of Ireland was 500k, which means that there was over and above 500k was over and above was paid by 500k for those assets. So we created goodwill of 500k. Yeah, goodwill on acquisition. And this is something which is really important. I don't know why people always mess this up, but loads of people always mess this up. Goodwill is only ever created on consolidation, right? You cannot have goodwill from a uh, acquisition ever sitting in a company balance sheet. You can see here it's coming through goodwill on acquisition. It's an item in your consolidation adjustments. It should never ever sit in a trial balance of a company. The only exception is if you're using a separate consolidation entity to book all of your consolidations in, which some people do. It's not a bad idea, but there's no way that the UK limited company could ever have goodwill sitting in it. That does not make sense. That's very important to remember. So we've got our goodwill, which is always an asset, yeah, and that's the goodwill and consolidation. That never changes. It's an asset, right? And you see here, 500k was created. We've linked that back through. But what do we do? What do we do? Control square back it, link it back through. What do we do to amortization? Well, we spread it out. We charge it to the PL. In this case, I'm saying we charge it over seven years. So I've divided it by seven, and I want to get the monthly cost, monthly charge, which is divided by 12, right? So I'm expecting every year every month in my PL to have a charge of 5.9k. What is our brought for position? Well, I've been amortizing it for a year. That's what I've decided to do just for the illustration of this purpose. So I've got a brought forward accumulated amortization charge of 71k. And you can see here, I've, I've dropped it in there. Yeah. And then there we go. All goes up. Where does the other side go to? Well, this is the chance. You know what your share capital is. The group's share capital is always just the share capital of the parent entity. So we know that the parent entity's share capital, if we look here, is 10, yeah? So the group always has to have a share capital of 10. So it doesn't matter whatever it is, whatever has happened here, you've got to get this, when you, this aggregation of the ordinary share capital back to 10 always, right? Because this is a factual number. We know that share capital never changes. It can't ever change. It always has to be 10. So chuck it there, chuck whatever you need there and put the rest to retained earnings, right? And that's our goodwill on acquisition, right? So we created our goodwill, our brought for goodwill, well done. The next thing we need to do though, so that's our first consolidation adjustment, sorry, well done everybody, that's great, that's a big one, people always seem to mess that up. The next one we need to do with those, what is our month, monthly consolidation? Monthly, sorry, monthly amortization. You need to go back to our goodwill workings, well I worked it out that it was 5.9K by doing goodwill on acquisition divided by seven years, divided that by 12, and we know that, that we only want one month, so that's five, but we know that we're in our second year, second financial uh, period of the year. So it's just that times by two, we charge it to amortization. And you can see here, this is important. It's a PL adjustment on amortization going to the group PL of 11K, and it's creating more of a liability on the balance sheet there, right? So you've got the aggregation, you put a console adjustment, and you put another console adjustment through. So that's great doesn't hit anything, just hits the PL and balance sheet like that. Always make sure your uh, your console adjustments balance, right? It's always this, this check at the bottom is really important. Check it balances, check it balances, check it balances. I'm sure you guys already do that. But that's great, right? So then what else do we have to do? Well, we've got to eliminate items, right? So you've got to always eliminate intergroup sales, right? Because at the moment, even though it doesn't have an impact on EBITDA, because we've got intergroup sales coming through on one side, so this is saying that Ireland sold 8.7K of junk to the UK here. What this is actually doing without eliminating this, if you don't eliminate these line items, what you're doing is you're overstating your sales and you're overstating your purchases. Yeah, you didn't actually sell. You didn't actually sell 1.6. Well, sorry, 1, 1 million and 62,000. You sold one million and 53,000, right? And that's why you've got to eliminate that. It doesn't have an impact on EBITDA, but you've got to remove it. And this is why it's kind of really important to set up these files correctly, right? Because if you can see here, what I did is I created a separate line for intergroup sales, which ties directly back to your TB, right? And I did the same in the UK for intergroup purchases. If we look here, intergroup purchases, separate line in the TB. Yeah, so reporting pack mapping, intergroup, 
as you can see here, separate line in the TV. And that means that when I come back to consolidate, it sticks out really clearly. Everybody knows what it is. You can see it obviously, and I immediately know on this consolidation schedule, well, hang on a minute, that has to be zero. I can't get rid of that, right? And that's often a good way of doing consolidation. You look at it and say, well, that has to be zero. So I've got to get rid of that. So how do I eliminate it all? 8729, well, that means I've got to remove it. Where can that other side be? Well, in this case, it sits in purchases, but where else could it sit? To sit? Well, it might sit on your balance sheet if your intercompany accounts didn't reconcile, it might be because one side wasn't posted, and then you'd know by looking at your intercompany accounts. But here we know, it's obvious here, that from looking at the two separate P&Ls, this line item here, and this line item here, these two, yeah, they obviously match against each other, and they obviously be, need to be eliminated. So it's, we just credit sales, I mean, it looks like a debit here. Uh, sorry, we're debiting sales, so that looks like a credit. Remember, I switched the signs around and you credit costs to remove that and you've done your elimination of intercompany trading. So that's the, the other, what one of the big things to eliminate. Scrolling down, what else do we have to eliminate? Well, when we're looking at the P&L, and this is how you review it, you go dividends received. Well, dividends received have to match dividends paid. And I've got it in the UK, dividends received here, dividends paid. Well, they don't quite match. And the reason they don't quite match is probably the banks use different rates. So while I sent 100K at the, PL rate of 87k when it was received and banked it was only 88 it was 88k so it was a little bit of an fx difference so what do we do well we just take the difference and put it to the PL as a difference in fx right and you can bury that in your overheads right but those two you know have to equal it wouldn't make any sense if they didn't equal so you have to eliminate that in some way right and then that means that when you add them up dividends when you add this this and this all added up together your dividends it comes to zero because you've eliminated it correctly right same with this one the same intercompany sales when you add it all up it comes to zero so you know you've eliminated it correctly scrolling down well what else do we have to eliminate or what else do we have to know about well investments at a group you can never ever have any investments if it's a hundred percent owned subsidiary that it is in this case that has to equal zero right so then and when i did the goodwill adjustment i removed it to zero right i know it's got to equal zero so let's make it equal zero so you chuck it there equals zero. What else has to equal zero on the balance sheet? Well, intercompany trading, yeah, has to, right? Because if something, if one company's bought it, the other one has to have booked an equal and opposite amount. It doesn't make any sense otherwise. And you see here in this instance, right, they, those two match. So, you should, so if everything has been posted correctly in your intercompany accounts, you don't actually need to post an adjustment. Now, in reality, what I've seen most often is that no one ever really reconciles their intercompany until the end of the year, if it's a private company. And so these are often out. And so they say that was 54,000, yeah? You don't know really what to do with it. You don't have time to check it. Often in group, you don't know how what, to, what time to check it. So I just chuck it to the PL. Uh, or if I've got a vague idea what it is, I chuck it to other creditors. So you can see here, it's out. You can see here, it's out by 1260. So how do I remove that? Well, I just do minus 12,600, yeah? And chuck it to other credit creditors, yeah? I'm sure there's some accountants, some uh, auditors wincing when you do stuff like this, but I'm talking about accounting in the real world when you've got to close books in three days. Is it going to impact the P&L? Is it going to impact EBITDA? If it is, investigate it. Do you have time to investigate it? If it isn't, park it in other creditors for another month and roll on. What you want to make sure though is that this is zero when it comes to the group numbers because any every single person if they see a value in that above zero they'll go that's wrong has to be wrong right any accountant who knows their salt will know that it's wrong same here investments has to be zero when you present group numbers because every accountant will see that and go that's wrong same here intercompany sales and purchase has to be zero at the group number because if it isn't everybody knows it's wrong right and these are the common things that decent accountants will check you go through that, you've done it all right, and here's a couple of things. So we've got our share capital, it's back to 10, which is great. You know that's correct. Yeah, it has to be because it's the parent. Parent share capital is 10, right? Reserves are there. The big change is that chunk in goodwill and acquisition. Check this the same every single month. That's what I do always. And now you've got your new profit in the year, which includes that amortization charge running through there, right? And you know it's all right because it balances. Well done, you've just done your group year to date, which is fantastic, right? That is your consolidation. Now, what I then do is everybody likes the year to date, that's great, but really what they care about is what happened in the month. And so what you need to do is you need to do another consolidation, exactly the same for the prior month, yeah? Exactly the same, but using the prior month TBs, which is why I've got them in here, prior month reporting packs. You take the difference again, 
and that gives you your monthly movement. And again, it's extremely important that you use your year to date figures, your year to date consoles. And the reason you do that is because if you made a mistake in your last month, which you picked up in December, you pick it up in the movement. So always consolidate off the year to date figures, never consolidate off the movements, right? If you consolidate off the movements, you're asking for trouble. And there we go, that's console done, right? So I'm just gonna stop that and we'll jump back into the presentation.